Welcome back, everyone. Toysh is here, and I'm back yet again to talk about Wave 1 of the mightiest toy line in all the universe. Heading back to the 1980s, taking the action figure powerhouses of the boys' action figure aisle, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and the Masters of the Universe, and slamming them together in a giant mixing bowl to produce... The Turtles, the Turtles of Grayskull. Of now, we have prior looked at Donatello as a standalone video. He is the heroic turtle at arms. He's pretty cool. And like I said, as we've already looked at him, I will be throwing him into this video to make a more concise Wave 1 vid. So you're welcome. But newcomers, of course, feature Man at Arms. He's the weapons master in a half shell. If you haven't gotten this by now, yes, it's all the elements of the Ninja Turtles mixed, matched, swip swapped with elements of the Masters of the Universe. <laughs> There's not a whole lot to this. You could pretty much get it. But the artwork is supoive. It's gorgeous. And I particularly love it along seeing all the other characters of Wave 1 and what the armor does. And here's the barcode if you're, of course, out looking for them. Now, we do get He-Man, the most powerful mutant in the universe. I got lots to say on this guy. Kind of looks like the Undertaker from the Ghostbusters team mashup, I will say that. Lots to be desired here. This one's at the bottom of the barrel. The artwork is supoive, and I like seeing Shredder at the bottom corner. Here's the barcode for this mega mutant mess. <laughs> Leonardo, of course, rounds it out. He's the heroic Ninja Turtle leader. One of my favorites out of this, at least let's say on the Ninja Turtle side with the other one coming up on the Masters of the Universe side. But that artwork right there, ooh, that's some awesome action right there. And here's the barcode for old Leonardo. Now, just when I thought I was complete with wave one, Mouse Jaw here started hitting at Target stores, and lo and behold, used the barcode and managed to find him. So he's gonna be thrown into this video as well. And he's a deluxe figure. He comes with build-a-figure parts to build the Metal Bato, which is, of course, Roboto and Metalhead spliced together gorgeous artwork as usual and i love seeing the back side of the packaging teasing other characters this one really works for me this is a nice interesting mashup two characters go together and stay tuned yes there will be four other deluxe figures that will build out the metal bato and it looks to be that slacker the slash Faker uh, mashup will be the next one coming up, which looks very interesting. Here's the barcode if you want to head to Target stores now and find Mouse Jaw. And just as a heads up, yes, seemingly this should be a Target store exclusive. I have seen other places offering him in the more of the vein of comic book stores and overseas. But rest assured, if you want him now and you live in the States, Target is is the place to be. However, if you are interested in the rest of Wave 1, or perhaps pre-ordering Wave 2, you can head over to Entertainment Earth. I'll tell you how you can get 10% off with my links, plus free shippings to boots, which is not too shabby if you ask me. But stay tuned to the end of the video, and we'll be talking more about all that nonsense. But in the meantime, we got some Turtles of Grey Skulls to talk about. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee, this is a look at the entirety of Wave 1, the Turtles of Grayskull, He-Man, Leonardo, Man-at-Arms, Donatello, and Mousejaw by Mattel. So once you get everything open, you cut all those little minute little twisty ties, which... Man, oh man, I hope 2024 changes that somehow. We can leave those out at this point. Save the environment and all that. But Donatello, he comes with this bright orange battle staff. And of course, yes, he's like man-at-arms all mashed up. He's even got that purpleized man-at-arms armor. And he looks pretty cool. Now, this toy line it really making no sense. But you have to take yourself out of it. I get it. Just have some fun. Switch your brain off and enjoy the madness. That's what I always say. But I have some things that I would have liked to have seen. Just have them come out just a little bit better, right? But overall, the paint for what's there, the articulation is He-Man origin style. Yes, his turtle shell comes off. He does have weapon storage. It's weird. It's wackadoo. 
but it's Donatello as man at arms. Now, Leonardo, he does come with dual swords, right? And it's all done in a silver plastic. There's not much to it. On the back sides of each sword, though, that's when it looks a little terrible. We'll just say, why? Well, those swords actually fit together to become one sword. Is it the He-Man power sword? Well, it certainly harkens to that, but I think it looks a lot better as one main sword because otherwise he doesn't hold it very well as when it's apart. Leonardo himself, like I said, is one of my favorites of the entire first wave just because he does fit that heroic He-Man look. No, that sword is not going to fit in his weapon storage for whatever reason. The shell does come off much like Donatello's, as wackadoo as that is, but he has the sword, the shield, he's every bit He-Man, and I tell you what, I would have loved to have seen some golden locks on top of Leo's head. That would have been wild. He does have a shell that's sculpted onto the back, but... That's just weird. His bandana has some articulation as well. And like I said, it's the same style of articulation. You can pop all the joints out. You can make your own Ninja Turtle He-Man character utilizing all the joints and parts and pieces. So there is some play function and a factor for the kiddos. But let's be honest, at this point, this is a true collector's line. I don't know about kids playing with this one. Now, Man at Arms comes with essentially the same colored baton stick that Donatello has, although it's a lot shorter, right? So he has his own variant of that. And of course, Man at Arms, he sort of shares some of that similar looking armor, but it's entirely his own with his own turtle shell on the back. And that's the whole subsequent story is that Donatello, Man at Arms team up, they make their own armor you get the idea. He holds it just like the turtles. He looks battle ready. It's essentially a Ninja Turtle man at arms. It's not too crazy, but it is fun. I'll give him that. The colors are there. There's a lot of function to this guy. Lots of armor pieces that you're going to have to struggle with while you move him around. They tend to flail about. He's got peg holes and whatnot. No, the helmet does not come off. He does have a fair amount of articulation in the head. You can get him looking up and off to the side. But for the most part, it's a solid man-at-arms figure. Now, when it comes to He-Man, now, this mutant version of He-Man comes with this giant silver battle club. It's got spikes all over it. He holds it just like any other He-Man Masters of the Universe figure would. This He-Man figure is bizarre. And I'm only saying that because he's entirely too small. He should have been a deluxe figure. I do like that his shoes have ripped and you can see his toes sticking out. But if you're going to do a mutant He-Man... Why isn't he green, right? And like I said, with mutant, right, you'd expect a green mutant ooze. He's so tiny. The turtles are bigger than he is. And really, it's not a great design because you could barely see what you're looking at. His facial features get lost. If this was a giant green action figure, that would have been really cool. Like a slime pit He-Man, but a slime mutagen He-Man. I think that that would really would have worked. He's now the smallest, tiniest figure as he's supposed to be the most powerful of the line. And it's just, yeah, they did not uh, complete the assignments on this guy by any means. He's got some large, long arms, which is totally cool. But for the paint... Everything that this guy comes with, it's so lackluster and boring. I'm just like, oh man, what a missed opportunity. Yes, he does hold the club. Why doesn't he come with a power sword or a giant sword like Leonardo? That would have been even better. So in my eyes, he's reduced to being the lamest out of the Turtles of Grayskull line for whatever reason. Now, moving on to Mouse Jaw, you do get several pieces to build out the Metal Bato. So this is the first of four, like I said. You can also use the other pieces that come with Mouse Jaw as you so choose. So more on that later as we get more pieces and can fully flesh them out. You can, however, swap the arms if you'd like with Mouse Jaw, but be sure to keep these parts close by as we head throughout the year and grab the rest of Metal Bato. Now, you get the rest of, and I wanted to keep saying Trap Jaw, but you got Mouse Jaw parts and pieces that we have seen before. The clamps, the axe, 
You get the idea by now. You also get this blast effect. It's all done in yellow. It's a little bit clear see-through, so that is nice to see. I always like effect pieces. That will, of course, fit into his little weaponized hand, which looks nice. But you do get one of the best aspects of Mouse Jaw, which is a mouser. And it's nice to see a different company who's not known for making Ninja Turtle toys tackle a mouser. He's got a little bit of an extendo neck. He's got the tab in the back, which will fit onto Mouse Jaw's arm. And then the mouth will open, rotate, and he has a cannon inside his mouth. And I totally dig that, which you can, of course, fit the blast effect piece into the mouth and have him as a little sidekick if you wanted to go that route. Lots of articulation in this guy. The legs do pop off. They fit onto Mouse Jaw's belts as a bit of a weapon storage. And of course, yeah, the Mouser will fit on his arm piece as well. So again, lots of play function, lots of displayability options. You got a little bit of a rotation in the feet so he can go stomping around looking for rats. You get the idea. I totally dig this. This is, again, one of my favorite figures besides Leonardo. But Mouse Jaw himself, he's very interesting. And as more of a quote-unquote deluxe figure, this is what I want to see when you mash up two properties. I do think that they really succeeded here in mashing up all the different elements to create an entirely new character. And that's what I'm here for. So you simply just pull that little parts and piece out and I just love attaching the mouser arm. That is very cool. That's terrifying if you think about it. Now, with other elements to mouse jaw, I would have liked to have seen this be a little bit more articulated in the arm. It simply just spins and then you have the shoulder rotation and whatnot. The eyes for the mouser as it loops all the way around look good and then they just stop. And I really wish that they would have continued the paint in that sense. The helmet is cool. He does have a mouser head with a mouser jaw and it clamps shut. Totally dig that. Again, nice to see that element with everything going on. The belt, like I said, if you want, you can attach the mouser feet. You have the knees, the feet. He's got the mouser feet. It's just really well done. I'm actually blown away by this one. I actually really enjoy this. And in looking at these as the entire first wave with He-Man being the bottom of his own line, right? It's pretty solid. Now, if you were wondering where do these scale from Super 7 to NECA Toys TMNT, they'll pretty much scale with those. With Super 7 being a little bit taller and NECA Toys being a little bit shorter, but for the most part, yeah, it all fits together. And as far as Masterverse goes with the He-Man Origins, most of you will know this already. Yeah, they're going to be entirely too small. But if you look at the Masterverse He-Man, that's what this He-Man should have looked like. A huge He-Man. And then in seeing all the different Mousers, again, from Super 7 to NECA to now the Battelle Mouser, throwing a little Baxter Stockman. I just like that in my head, or whatever you want to say, the comic book and what Krang is up to. It's like Baxter Stockman created a, a weird mouse jaw character, right? But enough about all that. Let's talk about how you can get your very own Turtles of Grayskull action figures going for your toy shelves. Now, I do recommend Entertainment Earth. I use them myself. They ship fast. They bubble wrap everything. Everything always arrives all nice and neat. And if you ever have any problems, they do have some fantastic customer service as well. So again, with my links, if you want any Turtles of Grayskull, you can just click on anything you see here. All of them for Wave 1 are in stock, so you get 10% off that. You can also pre-order Wave 2 if you desire, but you're not going to get 10% off on that. All of my links only pertain to any items that are in stock on their website. That's kind of the caveat of the whole situation. However, as many of us don't like paying shipping, which I totally understand, all orders over 79 bucks will automatically net you free shipping. Yes, that is, again, something we all have to deal with. It's not always an Amazon situation, right? Shipping will always be a thing. Nothing is free, of course, but there's some cool features figures coming up in wave two as well. So like I said, links down in the description below, 10% off, free shipping over 79 bucks. Check out Entertainment Earth. Highly recommend them. Guarantee you'll find something there that you like. So 
That will wrap it up for my look at the brand new Wave 1 of the Mattel Turtles of Grayskull action figure line. It's wackadoo. It's two properties. I wouldn't say go together naturally. You kind of have to force it a little bit. However, what we're left with, there are some gems to be sure, of course, with He-Man being the bottom of the barrel. But you have heard my thoughts, and now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything Turtles of Grayskull. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, we got a, a bunch more Turtles in Grey Skull coming for all of 2024. So strap in, sit back, and let's see where this line goes. Because I was one of those naysayers, and uh, they kind of sort of changed my mind. Kind of, sort of. And when they do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios. Adios.